be a dick or not to be a dick? That is the question. Oh, oh, uh, uh. Hey guys, help out here. I uh, just forget what we just saw. Um, yeah, I'm back from Butte, Montana. The frozen hell and with the biggest butthole on the planet. <laughs> because it literally has a huge hole right by the mountain that looks like a butt and where they mine the copper. And they have a shit ton of uh, casinos just spread all over the place. Those, those goddamn casinos. Are, yeah. Ah, just too many of them just spread out. Like someone just unleashed that huge diarrhea. <laughs> shit all over the place. But anyway. Uh, yeah. Got to go to. Got to see my mom for the holidays in a long time. So. Got to see her for Christmas and my birthday, which was the 4th. Yeah, it was okay. Cold as hell there. It was like negative 14. One night. Well, it's supposed to be my vacation, but most of the time I was just helping them move. So yeah, that was fun. Especially had to lift stuff that was like over 50 or so pounds. So yeah. Just, this is the only vacation I have, just playing video games. <laughs> I think that's with everyone. We all have our unique vacations. So, anyway, look, this is what we're going to be doing Beast vs. Goliath, Marvel vs. Gargoyles. I have to take off my glasses because glare. So, anyway, by screw attack, uh, so let's get to it. A three, a two, and a one. Position myself. Get my Some the of the greatest heroes of all are shunned by the very people they continue to protect. Go f yourself! Aww. I still plan to get Photoshop, I just kind of lazy. Beast, <laughs> the blue genius of the X-Men. And Goliath, the gargoyle who gives I the love to the Goliath, Goliath or stone. gargoyles. He's wears an iron boomstick. And it's our job to analyze their weapons, armor, and skills to find out who would win a death battle. X-Men is okay. Mutation. The key to evolution. The process is slow, normally taking thousands of years. But every few hundred millennia, evolution leaps forward. If that means we're all eventually gonna transform into blue hairy monkey men, count me out. Feared by most normal people, mutants generally begin to show signs of their uniqueness around puberty. Not so for Hank McCoy. Yeah, the instant he popped out, it was pretty clear that something was different about him. Namely, the giant monkey hands and feet. <laughs> <laughs> that must have been rough on the way out. He better Ow. give dear old mom double the presents on Mother's Day. <laughs> Though Hank successfully hid his mutation from the world throughout his adolescent life, he wow. was eventually discovered and shunned. Constantly harassed and eventually kicked out of his own school, he was left to wallow in loneliness. Until that sucks. good old Wheels showed up and offered him a place on the mutant group known relate. as the X-Men. Hank took on the nickname that was previously used to degrade him and transformed it into something new. His code name, The Beast. It's been so long since I've seen the cartoon. As an X-Man, Beast became an integral member of this uncanny team. His superhuman strength, speed, and durability let him go toe-to-toe -to -toe with baddies like the immovable Blob and Kraven the Hunter. But Beast was a genius, like yours truly, and quickly completed his doctoral studies. Hmm. Eventually leaving the X-Men, he became a leading researcher in mutant genetics. Desperate to cure the mutant phenomenon, Beast developed a serum which he theorized would temporarily counteract the mutated genes in Oh, like the movie. Except it kind of did the opposite. Poor guy, now he truly was a beast. His transformation wasn't all bad though. Fuzzy Beast could now lift over 10 tons, run over 40 miles per hour, <laughs> jump over 25 feet in the air. He also had a wicked healing factor which made him essentially bulletproof. But this was nerfed dramatically from healing instantaneously to over a couple of hours when Quasimodo's experiments turned him blue. For a scientific genius, he never did quite figure out how to yeah, turn Yeah, he's definitely to not a uh, Wolverine. <laughs> I mean, he's been able to turn into a cat man, a horse man, blue Kelsey Grammer, and even Sasquatch. Okay. Somehow, he always ends up as his classic blue ape self. Now unable to hide in plain sight, Beast had little choice but to return to X-Men as a teacher <laughs> and a leader. As my research makes evident, it is possible to enhance the intelligence of Mollusca cephalopoda, such as the squid, to the same level as that of the average human. 
even a little above it. Dog. <laughs> I'm afraid I must leave early, so I'll hand you over to my new teaching assistant, Mr. Cephalopod. <laughs> Beast isn't just a genius, he's also a ridiculously strong fighter. He has survived hits from the juggernaut, smashed open a tank with his bare fists, Damn. hit the ground with a punch so hard he created an earth shattering shockwave, what was he, Hulk? and lifted a solid gold oak tree. A cubic foot of gold weighs approximately one ton. Comparing the diameter of the tree to Hank's height, it's reasonable to believe that this golden tree weighs at least 60 tons. Or a shit ton, to be precise. <laughs> Despite his athletic skill and enormous strength, I would say something about that, but I don't want to offend this specific group of people. He is rarely eager to enter a fight. In combat, he usually relies on his teammates to throw punches while he holds back to come up with game-winning strategies using his brilliant mind. Like the time he figured out how to use Juggernaut's own bulk against him. Hmm. As Archimedes said when he discovered the principle of displacement, Eureka. But when he gets angry, he'll enter a rage which makes him so uncontrollably fierce, he's a danger even to his closest friends, literally unleashing the beast within. Beast's monstrous appearance remained a permanent part of his life. He was never truly accepted by society, and even had to leave the woman he loved for fear she would become a target of mutant haters. Wrong. But if he could have his way, he would spend his days hanging from the ceiling with a nice cup of tea reading Shakespeare. But we don't always get what we want, yeah, so we'll have to true. settle for kicking ass. <laughs> with heart of Except I definitely didn't do at the beginning of this video. <laughs> path to persevere. A minor poet for a minor obstacle. One thousand years ago, superstition and the sword ruled. It was a time My of personal darkness. favorite show. It was a world of fear. It was the age of gargoyles. And badass cartoon intros! Stone by day, warriors by night, gargoyles used to be common throughout the world. Like the stone statues they inspired, gargoyles were known I as... I still thought it was kind of sad that they're, they're completely vulnerable in the daytime. Their top priority. It's not every day your garden statue is also your top build bodyguard. Otherwise, I'd have a shitload more lawn gnomes. In the year 994 <laughs> AD, a clan of gargoyles formed a symbiotic relationship with the humans of a Scottish castle. Using their superhuman strength, keen senses, and warrior spirit, the gargoyles defended hmm. the castle from invaders at night. In return, their human allies would watch over them during the day when they are most vulnerable, as gargoyles turn to solid stone in daylight. The gargoyles were led by Goliath, a creature with a voice so sexy it made <laughs> humans turn to stone. What the fuck? You know what I'm saying? You are trespassing. They actually, he has the same exact voice in this frog uh, uh, anime. It's actually pretty good. I don't remember what it's called. I saw it on Netflix. We are most seriously displeased to allow beasts in the that they can use poison for their powers. It's like, you guys should check it out. It's pretty badass. from associating with them. If that and they even have death in it, like, they fight, they, they bleed, friend. they die, it's like, very interesting. To smashed to bits. Then the few that did survive were magically sealed in stone forever by a misinformed wizard. Talk about a shitty Monday. Sealed in stone forever, or until one very specific, seemingly impossible criteria was met. The terms of the spell were that they would sleep until the castle rises above the clouds. And when he says above the Specifically? Clouds, I mean, I think that's literally. bullshit. So, stone they remain for a thousand years until in 1994. Yeah, it's a great life to live. <laughs> like oh, different kind of stone. Okay. To be crazy enough to try something. Xanatos moved every last stone of the ancient castle to the top of his New York skyscraper, which happened to poke above the clouds. The cost of which must have been astronomical. Don't disappoint me. Still, that's a lot of money just for exactly what? Just to show off? Okay. I could never figure that part out. But yeah, the guy who did Goliath in that frog show, he was actually a human scorpion thing. Who was pretty badass. 
Despite being completely out of his element, Goliath adapted surprisingly fast. You mean he was texting and watching cat videos in no time? No. Yeah, that old guy almost never fought. Oh, so he yeah, he just sit around. Sensical description words like bodacious, radical. Or... He even befriended a blind guy. Jalapeno. 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 I have never noticed that. But then I haven't seen it in years. Huh? Jalapeno. 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 Damn it. <laughs> Turns out Goliath was naturally suited to traverse the broad expanse of the city with his enormous wings. Though to be clear, they Goliath really do like their intros of the shows more than or the characters more than anything. But then the fight even still broke the last right one. Here, other than friggin flying. Regardless of wind direction and speed, it seems Goliath has no trouble gliding wherever he wants to go. He only has issue taking off from the ground, requiring an elevated point to start from. Good thing he can scale giant skyscrapers from ground level without breaking a sweat. Goliath is strong enough to lift a car, create a small earthquake, and tear through steel with his bare claws. Like I'm gonna have to put my bet on Beast because Goliath's ultimate weakness is the day. Flight, and he's tough enough to survive a fall over 100. Because once it's he daytime, he's he's done. After being shot by a Nazi plane, so all Beast has to do is just wait. In World War II, he traveled through time. It was weird. Goliath may look like a brutal monster, and he certainly can be when he goes into a rage. However, he's actually rather clever and wise. He was able to outsmart Oberon, who is practically an all-powerful magical god. And when Goliath's not leading his clan into battle or struggling to have a relationship with a <laughs> human detective... Boundaries! He's usually holding up in his castle's library, reading. Wise and powerful, Goliath is a true force of nature. For 12 hours yeah, day, I was kind of hoping those two would be in a relationship, but the show... Stone statue. Well, the ending was... Even Just him proving that gargoyles have rights. That was kind of it. Hey, he's managed to survive for over a thousand years, and believe me when I say yeah, it's a spoiler, but it's been that for a long ass time. Bad side. My name is Goliath, and I belong to no one. Stop whining. A gargoyle doesn't whine. He roars. <laughs> All right, the combatants are set. Like I said, I'm going with the, the blue guy, it's Beast. It's time for a death battle! God damn it, I don't care about S-World. Oh, sword. <laughs> God damn, that's a big sign. to the ish or old 90s Shit on 90s cartoons. Beast and Goliath were pretty even in terms of strength and speed, ah. making this more so a battle of wit and experience. 
Beast was Damn. more of a team player, preferring not to fight directly unless absolutely And yet necessary. again, I choose the wrong guy. Goliath spent <sighs> decades defending his ancient castle in New York Shit. from Vikings, thugs, magic beings, and ghosts. His combat experience trumped Beast's. Also, be careful not to misinterpret Beast's golden tree feat. While it might sound far more impressive than anything Goliath has done, Beast did not actually lift a whole 60 plus ton tree off the ground. Huh? It's nothing surpassing his usual feats. Hey, one time Goliath got nailed in the back by an anti aircraft round. That's right, Goliath got shot by a gun designed to destroy airplanes, got back up and dropped a radio tower on the fools that tried it. Uh, it's been a lot, like I said, it's been a long time since I've seen it, so. For two reasons. One, he didn't know what would happen because gargoyles in his universe don't share the stone by day rule. And second, Beast isn't tough enough to stand against Goliath for 12 hours straight. Finally, Beast has fought somebody similar to Goliath named the Griffin, and only survived the fight due to his fellow X-Men Angel's help. Hmm. In the end, Beast just didn't have the heart to keep up with the gargoyle. The winner is Goliath. I don't know why I didn't go with Goliath. Next time on it's just I thought Death he was going to be working until daytime, then yeah. Oh, that one, yeah. I already did that. I guess I'll just figure this out. It's showtime! Hey guys, thanks for watching. I'm Ben, I play Wiz. And I'm Chad, and I play Boomstick. And, uh, next time on Death Battle Solid Snake, we've had snake requests. Yeah, I've already reacted to that one. But, yeah, hope you guys liked the reaction. I don't know why I keep choosing the wrong ones every goddamn time. Because I assumed that in the, they were going to fight until daytime, then Goliath would lose. But apparently, Beast just couldn't keep up with the strength of Goliath. So, yeah, that fucking sucked. And whatever. Anyway, I hope you guys liked their action. And have a nice day.